Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and today I'm going to be installing this little guy into my M4 base model Mac Mini, which only has a paltry 256 gigs. Apple should be ashamed for what they charge to get yourself two terabytes into the base model Mac Mini. It's actually more than the Mac Mini itself, and some people have said, oh, well, you know, these things are still way overpriced, dude. But the reality is, is they're a small company, guys. They're not Samsung. They're not Apple. And look Look at what Apple charges and they're actually on sale right now for $319 and if you click my link above you can get an additional 8% off when you check out and you get a one-year warranty. So even though they're not as cheap as buying an NVMe and an enclosure, which you can do and you can run your system externally that way, but you won't be able to use Apple Intelligence, big deal. You also can run your external home folder that way, which I have many videos on how to set that up. But if you want internal storage, which is really the best way to go as far as integration with Mac OS, you should get one of these guys. And you're way better off off buying more RAM than you are paying the Apple tax on storage. You don't have to get it right away. You can buy a base model and do this down the road. Anyway, let's get to the install and test it out. And there it is. Two terabytes of SSD goodness. Just to be clear, they have two different websites to purchase these SSDs from. One is m4-ssd.com and the other is m 4 boosthub.com and my link below in the video description will give you 8% off at checkout and you get the tools to do the job and they told me they're working on a Mac Studio SSD as well although they have not released that yet they're still working on it so we'll power down the Mac mini and crack her open and I'm currently running the Tahoe beta and Apple has just released Tahoe to the public today so they give you this convenient little tool to open up your Mac Mini's case. And all you have to do is put it in a little bit, goes in really easily, and then pop it upward. I used the suction cup on my first install with the M4 Pro Mac Mini, but I like this better. Uh, it doesn't like slide around on the table. Now I find these guitar picks to be useless. I have not gotten them to work. I much prefer using a spudger. And after fumbling with their pick for a little bit, I switched to my spudger. The Mac Mini has eight clips that you have to unclip that hold the bottom in place. I just got the second one. Now I'm gonna get the third one by the power button, but then I'm gonna work my way around the other side. And just, you know, one at a time. There's that clip. We got two more here. One, too much coffee, folks. You can see how it works there. And that's it. So eight clips in total. You want to do around the power button last. And as you can see, it's got a wire connected to the power button. Just leave that connected. Gently flip over the bottom and leaving the power button connected. Thanks for nothing, pick. And they give you this little Torx screwdriver, which has the three bits you need, the T3, the T8, and the T5. So first up, you want the T5 bit, just checking the size there and insert it into the screwdriver and unscrew all eight screws on the base plate. And get yourself a little cup to put the screws in. Also when handling an SSD, you wanna make sure you discharge any static electricity that could be on your body or use one of those little static discharge bracelets while doing the install because you don't wanna zap your brand new SSD or your logic board. Okay, so now that the eight screws are out, we can now flip open this base plate, which basically is the fan protector, I guess. Not really sure, but we're gonna pull that off. And it is also connected by a wire. So you wanna flip it in the same direction as the bottom plate. Just flip it over gently. You wanna keep these connectors connected. This one, you basically have to stand up. You can't lie it flat or you'll pull on the cable. We can see we got a little dust in there. It's a good time to go in there and blow out any dust. So if your Mac Mini's been around for a while, you might wanna give it a little cleaning maintenance while you're doing the install. So the next thing we have to do is remove two more T5 screws and then two tiny T3 screws. 
and this will allow us to remove the fan and then we'll be in. It's pretty simple, folks. Now this screw is a little buried and I didn't want to drop it into the Mac Mini. I couldn't get in there with my fingers. Uh, I think I did when I did the M4 Pro, but I'm just going to go in there with my little tweezers from my kit and lift that baby right out of there. Because nothing worse than dropping a screw into the computer. And now we just have the two T3s to remove. These are itty bitty screws. So again, you got to be really careful not to drop them once you get them out. So I switched from the T5 to the T3, and I'm gonna unscrew these two little guys. And now we take out the fan and we just move it to the opposite side of the mini. So be very gentle, because it's again connected by a cable on the left there. So you just wanna slowly flip it over and put it to the side and kind of stand it up uh, to get it out of your way. And now we have revealed the SSD. And we just have one screw left to get that baby out, which is the T8. So we'll switch our bit and unscrew the SSD. And Apple does use Loctite, and this baby was on there pretty tight. So I had to like really get a good grip on the Mini to get it unscrewed. And honestly, the screwdriver is not the best. I much prefer the kit I bought on Amazon, but I just thought I'd use it because that's what came with the kit. But the Techman 11-in-1 Torx screwdriver set comes with magnetic screwdrivers, which is much preferable when you're doing this job, and the nice spudger and the tweezers. But unfortunately, it is not currently available on Amazon, but you can get some kit that's similar that has the Torx bits that you need, which is the three, the five, and the eight. So I'm gonna use the little tweezers that came in my kit, because I just cannot get my fingers in here well enough to pull this baby out, and I wanna do it gently. So I'm gonna use my tweezers and be really careful of the thing that's right below it. Kind of give it a little wiggle back and forth. You don't want to just pull straight back. You want to give it a little wiggle. And it came right out. And this little component is kind of sticking up. So you kind of have to angle the back of the card up a little bit and wiggle it out. You can't just go straight back. So I actually found the M4 Pro to be easier just getting out that SSD than it is in the base model Mac Mini. You can watch my M4 Pro SSD install video if you click the link above. And looking at the two side by side, the Apple being on the left and the new one being on the right, they look almost exactly the same, but I am no chip expert, so I'm not going to say they look identical. Uh, we'll flip it over, take a look at the other side. You can see it's got this blue sticker on the chip and says Deep C. They say that they only use brand new NAND chips, but I don't think we'll ever know the truth to that. But just looking at them, they look almost identical. So I rotated the Mini around a little bit very carefully, keeping everybody connected, because I found you gotta kinda go in at an angle here to insert this, because you got that little piece down there that's in your way, blocking it. So you gotta go in at a slight angle, and then you just gotta push it in and make sure it's in all the way, which I'm doing here. I'm grabbing it, slid in just a little more, and there we go, we're in. And now we take our T8 bit, which is the big one, and we screw the SSD screw back into place. And then we flip our fan back into position lining up the screw holes back where it was located. Very gently, because again, you don't want to disconnect that ribbon cable. Whoa. Whew. All right, let's look down at the mini and make sure the screw holes are lined up before you start putting the screws back in. And we'll start with the two T5s on the fan and then the two tiny T3s. And that's one. And now the second one. And they are tiny. And now we'll gently close the top plate. And it's a good idea to pick up the other bottom plate as well when you're doing this. You do have some slack on that cable. You just want to be sure that you're not unplugging anything. 
So we just line up those holes and then we'll put in our eight T5 screws. So after doing this twice now, I gotta say it's pretty darn easy. You just gotta take your time and don't rush and beware of the cables that are attached. And uh, you know, next thing you know, you're gonna have a lot more storage. So now we just gently flip over the bottom plate, make sure the cable kind of goes back into that hole a little bit so you're not pinching it. I find it's easiest to stand up the Mac Mini to click the clips back into place. So that's what I'm doing here. I just work myself around to the different clip locations and snap them in. It takes a little bit of a push to get them to click. And that's it. We're in and we're ready to go into DFU mode. Okay, so you need a second Mac. I'm gonna use my MacBook Air for this. You hold down the power button and then you plug in the power cable and the Mac Mini will start flashing the amber DFU light, letting you know you're in device firmware update mode. And then you just use a USB-C data cable, not a Thunderbolt cable, to connect from the center port on the back of the Mac Mini, the one with the little Thunderbolt insignia, and you plug that into your second computer, preferably a Apple Silicon Mac running Sequoia. You can do it with an Intel Mac, but you'd have to download Apple Configurator from the App Store. And you can do it with a PC, but you have to purchase the DFU kit from m4boosthub.com. But if you have a second Apple Silicon Mac, you can just use it and you don't have to download Apple Configurator. It's built into Sequoia and probably Tahoe. So I'm going to plug the USB cable into my MacBook Air and the DFU mode just pops right up. And I've got my MacBook Air connected via Ethernet, so it takes much less time to download and do this process because you're reinstalling Mac OS. And I'm going to hit Restore Mac. Restore and Update. And I'll just speed this way up to get it done. It goes through the motions and then the connected Mac has been restored to factory settings. Please disconnect the restored Mac from this Mac. So we just disconnect it from the MacBook Air and it's going to reboot. So I like to use all wired connections when I'm setting up a new Mac. And that's basically where we're at right now. We have to go through the whole initial setup process again with the Mac Mini. So I use a wired keyboard and mouse. I use ethernet because now I have to transfer all my information from my time machine backup. So I wanna throw this in there. I ran into a roadblock when I was trying to migrate my time machine data back onto the Mac mini after it's been restored because when it was restored, Apple installed Sequoia because that is the current operating system until yesterday when they came out with Tahoe. But the point is I was running Tahoe on my Mac mini already. I was running the developer beta. So that is why it wouldn't allow me to migrate my data. So at first I had to update to Tahoe and then I was able to migrate my Macintosh HD data from my time machine backup. And then I just connected my user account, which is still on an external drive, booted up into that, no issues whatsoever. So just a quick Blackmagic speed disk test with the new SSD compared to the original. Basically the read speeds are pretty much the same, but we are crushing it on the write speeds, coming in twice as fast as the original SSD. And here's the amorphous disk mark, and you can see that we're pretty much crushing it on all the tests with the new SSD over the original 256. Of course, it's got larger cache because it's a much larger drive. As you can see at the very bottom, the random 4K QD1 test is won by the original Apple 256 gig. So you're not just getting a larger capacity drive, you're getting faster speeds and a larger cache. And in one of my other videos, I show that the internal Mac mini drive will slow down after copying about 120 gigs. It'll go from 2000 megabytes per second all the way down to 100 megabytes per second because the cache gets full and it switches to the slower NAND chip. So with a two terabyte drive, you should have a lot more cache and you should be able to do longer sustained transfers. So let's test out a big chunky transfer with the new drive. 
So I'm just going to copy my music folder off my external drive onto the Mac Mini's desktop with the new drive. And it's about, what, 131 gigs. It's going to copy in about a minute. And as you can see, we're keeping that nice steady 2.7, almost 3 gigabytes per second write speed. And these are a bunch of smaller files. This is not big chunky files. These are little audio files. So it's going really quick and it's being very consistent. Now I'm going to copy my pictures folder, which has a ton of little photo files, right? They're not big, long video files. They're photos mainly. Uh, and we'll see how that does. That's 55 gigs. And again, it's going nice and quick. We have not throttled and we have not slowed down due to the cache filling up. And the last one I'll do will be a much bigger file. And just so you know, I did speed these up a little bit, so they're not real time, but you can see that the write speed is being very consistent at almost three gigabytes per second. So now I'm gonna copy a Final Cut Pro project onto the desktop here from my external SSD, and it's about 170 gigs says it's gonna take about a minute. And as we can see, we're getting a really nice write speed, three gigabytes per second, which is pretty much the maximum you're gonna get on a Thunderbolt 4 port. So it's rifling through this very quickly and I don't see any slowdowns. I did quite a few transfers before this one, as you saw, and the speeds have held very consistently. It hasn't overheated and throttled and slowed down at all. And speaking of temperatures, we'll just have a quick look and then we'll wrap this up. And you can see it was idling around 30 Celsius before we went into doing the large transfers and the temperatures slowly went up, but we never did slow down. And our max temperature was about 75 Celsius. And if it was to hit 80 or above, Apple's software would kick in and slow down the transfer to bring down the temperature of the SSD, but it wasn't necessary. We never hit that throttle peak and the fan never really kicked up. So all is looking really good with our new two terabyte internal SSD. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me that thumbs up and I will see you on the next Max Sound Solutions video.